Hello everyone. This is uh, this is this course is about the electronic devices and circuits, and uh, the prerequisite for this course is is somewhat it's it is written linear circuit analysis. However, it is not essentially required. So my name is Muhammad Anzar Alam. I will be your uh, lecturer for this course and uh, and uh, hope and we uh, hopefully uh, we will have a good understanding of these electronic devices and circuits and hopefully you will understand each and everything and you will enjoy with this course uh, so let's we start this course uh, the electronic devices and circuits is basically the first fundamental electronics course for the electronics engineers it's not only for the electronics engineer but it is for the computer engineer it is for the computer science the communication engineers so it's it's the basic and the fundamental the first very first electronics course so it is very important course for your career if you stand if you stand on with good understanding good exercise good practice you will get you will be very uh very comfortable for this course otherwise it may be difficult for you so please give importance to this course based on this electronic device and circuits theory you will you will graduate you will up, upgrade your knowledge in the advanced level so this is very important course let me start uh, the course description the course description is is that uh, this course is intended to give the students an understanding to semiconductor semiconductor materials basic structure and properties so all these things you have to cover on the abstract level, I will say this course is, as I said before, this is the very first and the essential course in the electronics engineering, okay, communication engineering, and on the abstract level, what you will understand, what you will be, uh, you you will be master, you will be, uh, you will, you will be. Uh, have good understanding so in this course we will cover three topics mainly three topics please remember what are these three topics number one is the semiconductor material the semiconductor physics somewhat not in depth so semiconductor semiconductor material semiconductor physics the first first topic you has you have to cover and then the second topic is the diodes of course diode is made by the semiconductor material so the diode its applications its analysis some numerical examples in the diodes and the third category which you have to understand is the transistor definitely the transistor is also made by the semiconductor material so the transistors it's different types it's different applications it's transistor as an amplifier so we will study uh, the three uh, things in this course number one is the semiconductor number two is the uh, diode and three is the transistors so please it's a good news for you there is not so much topic you have you have to go uh, but only three topics you have to cover but we will try to go slowly and gradually in depth study on this material and not only for this semester but in the next semester you have to go through so please make a good foundation okay so these things we have to this is the abstract level course description you need to read i will not read all the slides but 
uh, yes i will try to say something so it is the slides is for you you have to read you have to understand and you have any question please ask on the words up or 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 by any way okay and now come to the course outline the course outline is 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 useful for the students so they will know in advance what we have what they have to study so it is not only the course outline the purpose of this course outline is that students are convinced students are i will not use the word the force it students should go through these topics week by week by themselves by having self study so the, you have to the 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 course content is given to you so that before attending the lecture or after attending the lecture you will go through the textbook and the reference book so you will you will grasp a good a uh, uh, good understanding of of this course okay i mean i'm not going to read all these uh, but the 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 first this is the first page of the course outline and here you i have not shown i think the semiconductor okay this it is included with the semiconductor material and somewhat the semiconductor mechanisms in the diode so it's basically the diode applications and the diode uh, analysis and the diode resistance diode load line all these things you have to you, we have to cover but the topic is the, 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 the but all these are are applied for the diodes okay so the next page of the course content is i think it starts with the transistors so the transistors the bipolar transistors the mosfet the fet transistor applications so all these things you have to it's a good course i will say it's a very interesting course it's a it's if you if you study if you if you study well if you give attention and if you do practice then you will love this course it's a very funny it's it's it's, it's not the it's not so difficult because mathematics involved is very less so it's not the but uh, but uh, but yes it's some some fundamental mathematics you need to have uh, we need to go through this material so if you go through these materials are not very tough these are just fundamental but at the same time they are very very interesting you need to go through by yourself and you have to read and watch the video and the lecture notes and then the question answer session you have to attend hopefully you will you will be in good position okay the textbook electronics devices and circuit robert l boyle state is your textbook so you have to uh, you must have to have this this textbook with you because almost or major majority of the course materials the lectures will be based on this course especially the numerical examples and i will suggest that i will say at this time that the quizzes quizzes the assignments maybe assignment note but the quiz and the examinations will be from this book okay uh the reference book there are many references book uh, but i have mentioned only two the, the first is the electronic devices electron flow version 9th edition thomas l floyd and the second is the set roy smith this is also good book so i will only recommend you this 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 two book as a reference and this is the the first book is the textbook please must have access or must have the hard copy of this book you can find from the library bank th these books uh, i i i am sure these books are available in the library bank of the university okay and uh, now something about the the about 
rule for the formal classes. I mean, this these rules were set for the uh, on-campus classes, the physical classes, but we have to go through because it is possible, it may be possible that after midterm, your class will become on campus. So anyway, anyway, some of the rules are also applied for the on online classes. For example, attendance is compulsory, it's 80%. Attendance will be marked daily, yes, sure. Five minutes after the class start, absent will be marked. However, the students decide attendance, attention is essentially required during the lecture. Marks distribution, you are familiar, classroom assignment, midterm, final exam. Okay, uh, I would like to add something for the online classes that what I am trying to do, I will give you the video lectures before the class start. So, the, uh, so you will be able to go through that lectures and the lecture PDF and the video. So you must have to go through that and on the uh, and uh, out of three classes, one hour class I will spare for the weekly. One hour one hour class weekly I will set for the question to answer. So you will study the the course material and then you will be asked questions so that i will know where you are standing and are you interested or not are you are you giving attention or not so based on these things the the outcome of the course will will be available and of course your marks so please uh, remember these things if you have any question you can ask me in the whatsapp group Introduction to the EDC, so the electronic devices and circuits. As I said before, it is the first fundamental course in the study of electronics engineering, not only electronics, communication, computer engineering, and computer science. This essential course starts from the understanding of the semiconductor material and their working principles. The first topic we have to cover is the semiconductor. Alternatively, EDC can all like electronic devices a circuit. Some 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 teachers say it's not. It's it may be. Uh, it may be said instead of EDC, it, it, instead of electronic devices circuit, it can be semiconductor devices and circuit. That is SDC. Okay, because it's not the electron. It's this. All we will study the semiconductor and the devices made from the semiconductor so someone alternatively edc is is microelectronics is also microelectronics one can find in every field of life from aerospace to toy thus you will remain motivated while studying this course yes what uh, yes uh, the the electronic devices the semiconductor devices is applied and is is applied in the aerospace the satellite industries to the toy industries is everywhere from from desktop to laptop laptop to pump top mobiles so from from industries to the medical equipment everywhere if you see, if you look around yourself everywhere you are dependent on the electronic devices so it's of course you will be where while you will uh, learning while you will studying this course you will automatically motivated while studying this course because you know what is the outcome of this course is everywhere in the, uh, in the, in the it's every you can find everywhere the electronic devices so but however this study is not as easy as watching a movie frankly speaking it's applied to anything you want to do new so this study 
I am saying it's very easy, it's very uh, uh, funny, it's very easy to understand and you will be motivated and it has a lot of applications and it is it is the start course for the electronics engineering and the communication engineering but at the same time frankly speaking this study is not as easy as watching a movie it requires your attention and daily practice along with completion of the assignments in time completing your numerical examples attending your question answer sessions so if you do these things timely or well before time this is the course for you you will be comfortable otherwise it's alarming for you so this is the status of any uh, of uh, of this course the course involves understanding of the semiconductor devices analysis and the design by applying mathematical equations and your intuition at every node of the circuit is required the lectures are of limited time period therefore it is you who has to spare time and efforts to understand the topics fully it is your responsibility reading the text and the reference books in order to practice large number of problem analysis okay so the basic properties of semiconductor so the first thing as i said before we have to study about the semiconductor the properties of the the basic properties of semiconductors and and in particular silicon yes silicon is one of the semiconductor material one of the silicon is one of the widely used commonly used is used material silicon in the in the electronic circuit so first we will go through the we will take an example of silicon and then we will move to another material but the first important material in the semiconductor we will study about the silicon starting from its atomic structure the covalent bonds and the pn junctions the diodes construction of the diodes so we will next in next slides we will focus about the silicon material okay okay introduction to the semiconductors and as i said before silicon is one of the of the widely used semiconductor in the electronics the silicon is placed on the fourth group of the periodic table open your periodic table and see where the silicon is placed is placed in the if you open this one so you will find the silicon it has atomic number 14 mass and we will see it's a non metallic element this is this one is placed in a fourth a group it's uh, non metallic it's not metallic with 14 atomic number atomic number means number of electrons so 14 electrons in the inner shell it has two electrons in the next higher shell it has eight electrons and uh, and, uh, and in the outer shell it has four electrons <clears throat> that is the reason why it is placed in the fourth group so the outer shell is important for the covalent bond so the the important information in uh, uh, is that the silicon is having the four outer shell electrons okay the electrical properties of silicon is in between conductor and insulator it's not it's a non metallic material as i said before it's a non metallic element so it's it's not the conductor at the same time it's not the completely ins insulator for example if you use copper copper is a conductor okay it has free electrons abundant free electrons but the same but silicon is not the conductor it has not free electrons at the same time it is not perfectly insulator as 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 the others okay so the semiconductor that's why it is 
the name is given is semiconductor is neither a good it is its property is in between its electrical property is in between conductor and insul insulator or we can say neither it's a good conductor nor it's a bad neither it's a good conductor nor it's a good insulator so it it is in between so this is the very important property this is the very interesting point because is this one is not acting as a as a perfect conductor and as a perfect insulator so the the we have to mold this semiconductor this silicon in such a way that whenever we want to make it a good conductor it will become good conductor and and if we want to make it an insulator so it will become an insulator this is the wonderful this is the wonderful property of the silicon please remember what i said now this is the task of all the electronics engineer whenever if you design a circuit if you want to make stop something we will use the semiconductor and you we will use semiconductor as an insulator so the so the output device will stop there will be no flow of current and whenever we want to make it conductor then we will turn this silic silicon material as to to, to a good conductor so it will so you you see that although this is a very single single one line in sentence but it if it has a lot of of things inside so the, the the final thing i will say i mean the last thing silicon is a semiconductor material it has it is not a good conductor and it is not a bad conductor but it is in between and the benefit of this one is whenever we want to make it a good conductor we can make it good conductor whenever we want want to make a insulator we can make a make it as a insulator so all these things we will study in this course semiconductors are classified into two categories okay this is material wise properties the the single crystal silicon and germanium for example are the single crystal material okay well, i mean i mean one element it has only silicon the pure silicon will have only silicon atom similarly the germanium and as the, the other semiconductor is the compound gallium arsenide for example gallium nitride gallium carbide and gallium yes uh, there is uh, a, a number of compound so it's not it has is as you can say it's it's not only single element so first we will focus on this silicon and then we will move to this but you should remember semiconductors nowadays i mean in in this era in this decade the their different semiconductor materials are used are being used in manufacturing the ic's in manufacturing the diodes the transistors the very large scale integrated devices the computers the chips everything is made by three materials silicon I mean, silicon is 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 the one of the of the widely used, is commonly used, and the germanium is is only used in these special cases, and the gallium arsenide and the gallium nitride. The most common and widely used semiconductors in EDC are germanium, silicon, gallium arsenide, gallium nitride. Silicon is the material for electronic devices. Okay, now. because silicon we are focusing on the silicon so we have to study in depth starting from the from the its 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 atomic structure and then we will see how it is going to be useful as a semiconductor okay how 
the same the silicon we can find it's 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 from the earth crust i mean the sand the the sands the the stones the stones crust so all these things are available these are the raw material for the silicon so these are not the these these stands stones have have are not uh, uh, comprising of the pure silicon so naturally silicon is not available in pure in its pure form so we have to refine we have to clean we have to refine we have to process so after processing of this 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 thing we can make a pure silicon and what is pure silicon we will state next so the pure silicon can be achieved by the earth crust so and and you know the earth crust is basically 28 percent of the earth crust is silicon and 47 percent is water okay and i said silicon is the most commonly used semiconductor material still it is it is widely used in, in the in the manufacturing of 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 the all kinds of the electronics electronic devices so it's abundantly available silicon is there is no problem for the raw material but we process this raw material in order to achieve almost 100 percent silicon okay so hope you understand you if you have any questions you can i mean nowadays online resources are available so you can Search, you can ask question directly from the teacher. Silicon covalent structure. So as we know, these four electrons in the valence shell of a semiconductor forming covalent bonds to four other neighboring atoms. So these are the structure, atomic structure of the silicon. And all these silicon atoms are having a covalent bond with their neighboring atoms. So, okay. So, I mean, the outer shell is having four electrons. You can count one, two, three, four, and and it the the the, the four these four electrons are coven are bonded coval covalently with their this with this neighbor this one this one one electron is is bonded with this one second electron is bonded with this one third electron is bonded with this neighbor atom and fourth electron is bonded with so of course this is the one dimensional diagram so okay uh, electrons are not free to move about the crystal lattice as we can see here the, all the four electrons are making covalent bond among themselves with the neighboring atoms. So there is no free electrons like copper. The outer shell of the copper is one, having one electron. But this, this silicon having four electrons, same is true for the germanium. So there is no free electrons available. To move around this crystal lattice so it means there will be no flow of current as you know the definition of the current is basically the movement of the charge moving of the electrons moving of the the negative charges moving of the of the 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 positive charges so as long as you have charge and if it is moving in in its in its structure then there will be flow of electrons so we can see there is no no moving there is no free electrons so there is no moving electrons okay so that's why it, this okay electrons are not free to move about the crystal lattice those intrinsic pure semiconductor are relatively good insulators as compared to the metals hmm? intrinsic semiconductor is an 
insulator having a complete electron shell as we discussed already. Thermal, however, thermal energy may occasionally free if we have this, uh, this is the, again the silicon, uh, silicon crystal lattice and uh, we have no free electrons here. However, it says that if we apply thermal energy, if we heat up, if we make it warm, heat up, this is structure, then after having this thermal energy, so when you apply, if we heat up this one, then the resulting, then the resulting silicon crystal lattice will be look like this one. You can find there will be uh, one electron or maybe few electrons. So these, this electron is free electron. This is not having the covalently shared by the another atom. This electron may be from any other. Uh, maybe from one of the of the atoms of the silicon it is excited its energy level becomes high so it will it will move from its outer shell and it will be available freely in in the crystal so this electron of course if the the atom which releases after thermal energy it which releases one electron, then that atom will have also created a hole because this atom is deficient of one electron. So, if for example, if we take this atom, if this atom is releases its one electron, okay, then because now this will be short of one electron, so this will having a positive charge. So this, oh, this, this, this is what we will say. This atom has a hole. Hole is a positive charge. Electron is a negative charge. So the the conclusion is, thermal energy may occasionally free an electron from the crystal lattice. This electron is free for conduction about the crystal lattice. And. Uh, if an electron is freed, it left an empty spot with a positive charge in the crystal that is known as a hole. This hole is, is not fixed to the lattice, but it is free to move about. Okay, I'm just uh, thinking if it is recording or not okay it is still recording so we will continue hmm. so the thermal energy the Thermal energy may occasionally free an electron. So, if you apply heat to the crystal lattice of the silicon, then it will free an electron. So, what is what is what is the result? Now it has one free electron and one positive hole. So, if it has one free electron, this this electron can move from here to here in the crystal lattice. So, this electron can cause a flow of current so what we get if you apply a thermal heat to the silicon it may become it may free one electron if you apply more thermal energy it may create more free electrons the more energy then more free electrons it means this insulator can become a conductor because now it has a number of free electrons so it is it will it will it will produce current but this cannot be produced current so please remember the one of the basic uh, uh, semiconductor material property is if we heat up beyond some limit so it will become a conductor okay 
as we have seen here. So if an electron is freed, it left and hole, as I, as I already told you, increasing the temperature will increase the number of electrons. So what we are finding for the silicon material, that increasing temperature will increase the number of electrons and holes, decreasing the resistance. Did you get it? What is the resistance? Resistance is basically the resistance for the movement of, of, of the electrons. So it has no free electrons, so there is no movement, the resistance of this crystal lattice is high, but now after heating this has more electrons, more free electrons, so this can conduct current called the free electrons. And so three electrons is moving, it means there will be more current. It means this crystal lattice will have less resistance. So one of the uh, property for the silicon material is if we in it's in if we heat up this one, if we apply thermal energy, then it will become a conductor, and if it become a conductor, it means it has less resistance as as the cup, copper copper is a conductor it has very less resistance okay so this is one of the good properties but if you compare this property this this silicon property with the uh, with the conductor for example copper so this is opposite this is opposite of metals this is not the metal this is non metals and metal, the resistance increases with the increase in temperature. So what we have seen in the crystal semiconductor, in the silicon, if you increase the temperature, the resistance will decrease. But for the copper or the metals or the conductors, if we increase the temperature, because they already have free electrons, abundant free electrons, if we increase the temperature of the metal, so these free electrons will start to swing, which will start to vibrate very aggressively. And if instead of flowing, it will vibrate in its so it's so due to, due to the vibrations of these electrons, they will collide with each other. The abundant electrons in the metals, they will collide with each other, and it means there will be a restriction for the flow, flow of electrons in the metal. So the metal will increase its 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 resistance. So if we so one again, this is opposite of metals. In metal, the resistance increases with increase in temperature by increasing the collisions of the electrons with the crystal lattice. Now it's uh, I think it's 35 minutes, more than 35 minutes. So we will continue in the next lecture. See you. Take care. Love is.